In 2012, 22-year-old twins, Ryan and Scott Fitzsimmons from Meath, Ireland, decided to start a YouTube channel, recording videos off the laptop that they shared. They started to make videos while studying game design in university, and they ultimately wanted to create games for people to enjoy. Many of us remember the early days of Minecraft YouTube. Scratchy microphones, potato FPS, no face cams. Those were the days. In today's video, I'm doing a deep dive into one of YouTube's biggest Minecraft groups, The Little Club. The first public video on the Little Lizard Adventures channel was posted on June 20th, 2012. It seems like they must have privated a lot of their early videos, as the oldest video on the channel is a series called Minecraft Subscriber Creative Series. It is unclear what happened to these early videos as they are not documented on the Wayback Machine. In addition, the videos on the original Tiny Turtle channel are since deleted or private, but we'll come back to that later. At the beginning of their channel, Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle's early videos were mainly dual commentary videos, as they were the most requested videos on the Little Lizard channel. They posted a series of them playing Minecraft on the Xbox called Bros Minecraft on Xbox. They also played a Minecraft adventure map together called Escape Island. The early videos are mainly centered around Minecraft, but the twins tried to branch out from the game with their slap bet Call of Duty challenge where whoever got the most kills could slap the other in real life. It seems like people really enjoyed their competitive energy, their banter, people loved that they were from Ireland, and overall people liked what they were doing in Minecraft. Over the course of 2012, the brothers achieved a steady amount of views as they consistently posted Minecraft videos. They posted almost daily on the Little Lizard channel and sometimes even posted multiple videos per day. This was pretty common back in the early days of gaming YouTube and sometimes seen as the only way to grow in this space. In early 2013, Little Lizard posted a video called Minecraft Movie A Hero's Journey Part 1, which followed Minecraft Steve's battle against the feared urban legend Herobrine. The Minecraft movie had no commentary or voiceover, it just featured that one popular Kevin McLeod song that every YouTuber used back in the day, but this seems to be the first look at the story, the editing, and the cinematography that Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle could do. Shortly after the debut of their Minecraft movie, Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle announced that they would be merging channels. They came to this decision because they had been making a lot of videos together and they faced difficulty in deciding which channel to upload the videos to. They also probably noticed significant growth in one channel over the other. The original Tiny Turtle Gaming channel is still up and it has about 9,000 subscribers. The reaction to this decision was mixed. Some felt that Tiny Turtle would be losing his identity by merging with the Little Lizard channel. Others found it to be a better solution so they didn't have to keep up with two different channels. It's ultimately hard to say if this was a good move for the channel though it would make it easier on the twins so they wouldn't have to create double the content and fans could come to one place to watch their videos. Only one day after posting the announcement about the channel merge, the twins uploaded the first episode of their Pixelmon series, which introduced a Pokemon mod into Minecraft. This is the first video that really blew up for Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle, and I believe initiated the rapid growth that they saw on their channel. And I think there are a couple of reasons why this series took off the way that it did. Mods were pretty new back then, so getting in early on featuring mods in your channel is pretty key. But Pixelmon as a mod, in particular, combined the open world sandbox game of Minecraft with a classic game from many people's childhood. The Pixelmon videos have more views than any other videos they posted around this time, and the channel hit 10,000 subscribers soon after the first few Pixelmon videos were uploaded. Between the start of Pixelmon in February 2013 and May 2013, the brothers had a few non-Pixelmon videos that blew up, but the Pixelmon series seemed to be the main driver of views on the channel. On May 3rd, 2013, Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle started their Minecraft Dinosaur series, which is exactly that, a dinosaur mod for Minecraft. In 2022, this video has 4.3 million views, but at the time, the series saw views in the tens of thousands, which doesn't sound like a lot, but at the beginning of their channel, this is quite a lot of views. In the first video of the Minecraft Dinosaur series, you can see the production value of these early videos start to improve. They included an intro to the series, and it sounds like their audio quality also started to improve. They also started to have a little more energy and enthusiasm in their voices. Seeing the success from both of these series, they began to alternate Pixelmon and Dinosaur videos and sprinkled in different videos from time to time. 
In September 2013, only six months after hitting 10,000 subscribers, the channel hit 100,000 subscribers and 20 million views. Throughout 2014, Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle posted a variety of different series, the most notable being the How to Train Your Dragon series, which rode off the wave of the sequel's release. The series proved to be a great follow-up to the Pixelmon and Minecraft Dinosaur series of the past year. marked the beginning of what I'd like to call the Little Club era, and this began with the start of the Minecraft School series. On December 1st, 2014, the brothers uploaded the first video in what would become a monumental series on their channel, Minecraft School. In these roleplay style videos, Tiny Turtle as the teacher and Little Lizard as the student would show off different Minecraft mods. These videos heavily featured the banter between the brothers and would eventually introduce different characters into the Little Club universe. Minecraft School was a unique way for Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle to show off Minecraft mods. While other YouTubers were filming their classic mod showcases, which were formulaic and lacked any creativity, the twins found a way to introduce mods to their audience in an authentic way that really made the videos about their relationship and their personalities. After posting their first Minecraft School video, they continued to upload other content, and it would be 10 days before they posted the second video in the series. Minecraft School became a series that they posted a couple times a month as the twins focused on primarily uploading How to Train Your Dragon videos. In January 2015, the twins began to post Minecraft School videos multiple times per week as the views began to skyrocket to the hundreds of thousands. The Minecraft School format was an opportunity for the twins to create mod videos without necessarily being locked into creating a series about one mod as they had done in the past. On February 20th, 2015, the first non-NPC character, named Little Kelly, was introduced to the school. Similar to the NPCs, she did not speak, but she did help show off the new Animal Bikes mod that the video centered around. It wasn't until 61 episodes later that Little Kelly finally spoke for the first time. It seems like the audience loved the addition of Little Kelly as many episodes after her first appearance are centered around her. Throughout the beginning of 2015, the Minecraft School series started to evolve. It shifted from a unique format for showing off mods to more of a story-based series that included mods. Instead of merely featuring Tiny Turtle as the teacher showing off a mod to his class, the mods were integrated into the storylines that Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle were building. Some episodes didn't even feature any mods, like Minecraft School Little Kelly's Big Secret, where the episode centered around finding the cure for Little Kelly's illness to get her back to school. In March 2015, the channel reached 1 million subscribers and the Minecraft School series was gaining views in the millions. The series continued to introduce new characters and this is where the Little Club began to form. In an episode called Minecraft School, Mindvengers Assemble, posted on June 16th, 2015, the Mindvengers, now known as Little Robo, were introduced to the school. Subsequently, their YouTube channel was debuted shortly after this. Not long after their introduction, Sharky and Scuba Steve joined the crew with their YouTube channels linked in the description. This was a great move by Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle, and something that set the Minecraft School series apart even more. It began as a unique way to show off mods and evolved to a fun roleplay series with characters that you could follow along with. We see the Little Club universe and empire starting to grow as these characters start their own channels, which function like spin-offs from Minecraft School that provided something for everyone. Early 2016 saw the introduction of the Minecraft School server, a free, open to the public server that centered around Minecraft School and its cast of characters. Players completed tasks to earn money and brownie points to level up from kindergarten all the way to a PhD. Welcome to Little Lizard High. Your goal is to get good grades and rank up through the school years till graduation. In the extra credit tasks, you could bake a cake with Little Carly, go to Hero Ryan's library, or go fishing with Scuba Steve. You could also purchase a plot which spawned a house where you could store your stuff. The Minecraft school server was unique because it wasn't just a random server of mini games that a creator slapped their name onto. It gave viewers a way to interact with their favorite creators from their favorite series. It was unique and really set the little club apart from any other YouTubers at the time. Outside of the eight episodes they made on the server, it's hard to say if the server was successful or what became of it. From what I can find, there was no formal announcement that the little club had formed. 
I tried to find the exact time period where the little club became official, but without a formal announcement, it's really hard to say. I narrowed it down to this Who's Your Daddy video posted in April 2016, which is the first time all of the channels of the Little Club members are listed. It's possible that there is an earlier instance on a privated video, but this is what I could find. By April 2016, 9 of the 19 Little Club members had been introduced, and the Little Club Adventures YouTube channel was created. The first video on the channel was technically a reposted video from the Little Lizard channel, except they added a couple of elements. Notably, they introduced Alfie, the narrator, who must read through all the books in the library to break the curse that plagues his wife. They sprinkle in clips of Alfie reacting or narrating the action, but otherwise it's basically a repost. The Little Club Adventures channel provided viewers a seamless way to watch the Little Club role plays, and it provided a taste of everything for any kind of Little Club fan. Each video starts with some lore surrounding Alfie before it turns into a regular Little Club video. I think the Little Club Adventures channel is an interesting way for the Little Club to repurpose their content, but as a viewer, I'm more interested in Alfie's story than hearing him commentate over a video I probably already watched. They eventually drop the lore aspect and keep it as Alfie somewhat commentating slash interrupting a normal Little Club video. And eventually the premise of Alfie starting the videos disappeared and they continued to upload typical Little Club videos. The views on this channel really fluctuated between the thousands of views to hundreds of thousands of views, and it was pretty inconsistent from video to video. The Little Club HQ really took the organization to the next level. Not only did it solidify it as a real venture with real employees, but it also provided an opportunity for the Little Club content to improve. Nearly every member had their own recording space in the office, and they often used the office as a backdrop for their IRL collaboration videos, which they started to film more frequently. And again, it's hard to pinpoint exactly when the Little Club HQ became an official office for the group, but the first video that I could find that was shot in the HQ was a cake baking video on Little Kelly's channel from January 2016. The office looked great, decked out in gaming art, Little Club art, and more. Having this office also added some legitimacy to the Little Club, and viewers could get a taste of the behind the scenes of the club as they posted in the HQ. They also had video editors, some of whom would become personalities of their own in the videos. With so many Little Club members leaving and the pandemic hitting not long after, it's hard to say if the Little Club HQ still exists. The last reference to the HQ that I could find was from Little Robo's Instagram post from November 2019. The Little Club is still listed as tenants in the Office Complex's website, so it's possible that they still use the HQ, perhaps for Spectral Studios or for Little Kelly's videos. 2016 also saw the start of Minecraft School Season 2, and even from the first episode, it showed huge improvements and upgrades from Season 1. It began with a cinematic intro which showed off new sets, and despite the upgrade in the set and the production value, it featured the same goofiness that their audience came to love but the absence of a couple of characters did not go unnoticed. The episodes primarily star Little Lizard, Tiny Turtle, and Donut the Dog. And at the time, people in the comments were begging for Little Kelly and Little Carly to come back to the series. Another notable shift about Season 2 is that it didn't feature mods as heavily as Season 1. Whereas Season 1 seemed to feature a new mod in every episode, Season 2 relies heavily on roleplay, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. They still use mods here and there for the different storylines, like the dinosaurs in the school arc, which gained a good amount of views at the time. But it wasn't long until the Minecraft School series took a backseat for an explosive new series, Realistic Minecraft. In September 2016, Little Lizard debuted another series on his channel that blew every other series to use out of the water. The Realistic Minecraft series became the most popular series on the channel, showing that Little Lizard and the Little Club were capable of topping themselves again and again. The realistic Minecraft series featured real-life Little Lizard getting trapped in Minecraft. It's shot from first-person point of view and features just Little Lizard's hands on the screen as he plays Minecraft. He punches trees and gains logs that are printed out in real life. The series in the channel itself was obviously geared towards kids, and it was an interesting mix of Minecraft and popular culture, in addition to answering the question, what if Minecraft was real life? The series was goofy, so it's no wonder why kids like the videos so much. Come on in, let's go. Okay guys, I'm excited. Let's test it out. Oh, oh, that's so crazy. Okay, I'm gonna go for it. Well. 
The series, like Minecraft School, was a loose enough premise that it lent itself to many different crossovers, like Pokemon Go in Minecraft, visiting a fast food place in Minecraft, and how to train your dragon in realistic Minecraft. While I'm not sure if they were the first to start the realistic Minecraft trend, I will commend them on their creativity and their execution of the format. As gaming on YouTube grew, it became really important for channels to set themselves apart and do new and creative things. Judging by the views on the series, which is now in the hundreds of millions, this was a successful feat for the Little Club. 2017 saw the decline of views in the Minecraft community as Fortnite came out and dominated the gaming scene. This year was a dark time for Minecraft YouTube and would challenge even the most consistent of YouTubers. Little Lizard posted some Fortnite content on his main channel, likely testing the waters to see how it would be received, and the views were mixed. In 2018, he and a couple of other Little Club members started separate Fortnite channels to satisfy their Minecraft audience and to reach a new Fortnite audience. Little Lizard posted Fortnite short films, which kept the cinematic and roleplay aspect of his Minecraft channel. The videos contain no actual Fortnite gameplay, they are purely cinematic Fortnite roleplays. From the get-go, these Fortnite films were popular, gaining views in the hundreds of thousands to millions. Little Kelly followed suit, also posting Fortnite films. These did not do as well view-wise initially, but looking back almost 5 years later, many of the videos have well over a million views. Little Kelly was still posting on this channel up until about May 2022 as views completely plummeted. And last but not least, we have Fortnite Seasons. It's hard to say exactly which Little Club members actually own Fortnite Seasons, but we do know the channel is run by former Little Club members Baby Max and Little Donnie. Fortnite Seasons also posted Fortnite roleplay videos that actually got pretty popular. They stopped uploading on the first channel about six months ago before switching to Fortnite Seasons 2, where they continue to post every few days. Moving to Fortnite or even making a secondary Fortnite channel to post through the hype was a pretty good business move, though I can't imagine it was easy to start creating nearly double the amount of content to populate multiple channels. And with Fortnite being a different medium than Minecraft, it was cool to see how the Little Club took their cinematic craft and applied it to Fortnite in a better way than they did with Minecraft. Though the content was very obviously targeted towards children, you have to give credit where credit is due. The last stop on the Little Club tour brings us to Minecraft Dragonfire, a mod for Roblox in Minecraft made by Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle. Dragons were always a theme on the Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle channels, going all the way back to early 2013 and the How to Train Your Dragon series. So it's no surprise that the twins created their own dragon mod slash experience for Roblox and Minecraft. The first instance or announcement of the mod was September 2019, and the video linked to Tiny Turtle's Patreon where viewers could donate to access the beta of the dragons mod. It wasn't long until the twins were making videos of the mod, and soon the series took over the Tiny Turtle channel nearly entirely. It's unclear exactly when they formed Spectral Studios, but with the Dragonfire mod, the twins created the Spectral Studios channel sometime in 2020. It's also no surprise that they created the mod themselves, as back in their early vlogs, they mentioned wanting to design games for people to enjoy. At this point, they had been making videos for 8 years, and I'm sure they were eager to move on or to expand to different ventures. Studying on games development in college. Mm -hmm. We finished our first year. We want to make games. We want to make games and we want to make videos of the games we make and then play these games with the people that watch the videos of the games that we make. And then play the games. And just play the games. We see a lot of YouTubers who make videos for 8-10 to 10 years who eventually start these ventures like making music, making films, or making games. This is pretty common. I think YouTube is a great stepping zone for this purpose because ultimately YouTube is not reliable for income. So diversifying your income is good as well as giving fans something that they can interact with. Think about it, their favorite YouTubers are creating a dragon mod, which you know they're going to play, and you can play it too. The Dragonfire mod was an authentic product, not just Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle throwing their names onto any old mod that gave them money. It's authentic and you know they're going to play their own mod, so it's going to be good, or at least made with the creators in mind. Unfortunately, since the release of Minecraft Dragonfire, the little club has declined in membership, and nearly all of the core members have stopped uploading, including Tiny Turtle. Now is a great time to talk about the little club brand as a whole. There are many reasons why I think the little club brand worked as well as it did. 
One of the biggest reasons the Little Lizard channel took off in the first place was because they were making such fresh content and sometimes started their own trends. In an interview in 2014, Little Lizard shared that they tried to post new content that people hadn't seen before. We like to have our own twists on a few games, custom games that only we've played or come up with. He also went on to say that sometimes he and Tiny Turtle would ask modders to create mods for them to show off and play on. I haven't heard of many Minecraft YouTubers doing this. I know many YouTubers would do mod showcases on their channel, but I haven't heard of many YouTubers who would contact modders themselves and request for specific mods to show off on their channel. I think this set Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle apart from the very beginning of their channel. Additionally, the way they were showing off mods through their Minecraft School series was unique. Many other YouTubers showed off mods in a very simple way. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're checking out the fill in the blank mod. Whereas Tiny Turtle and Little Lizard created a roleplay format that allowed them to show off mods in an authentic way and eventually led to the creation of the Little Club as it stood in their peak. In these Minecraft school episodes, which doubled as roleplay and mod showcases, the series introduced new characters. These characters were introduced in a way that is similar to TV shows. And with these new characters being introduced, they typically announce their YouTube channel for viewers to go subscribe. Now let's talk about the naming conventions, which I think was a really smart move on behalf of the Little Club. Nearly every member of the Little Club had an adjective like little or baby in front of their names. This is an easy way for fans to engage and carry the brand on their own. If I knew about the Little Club back in the day, there's no doubt that I'd probably have a name like Little Pebs or something like that. Additionally, with so many characters, people always had their favorites, and there was something for every kind of viewer. If you weren't interested in Pixelmon, dinosaurs, or dragons, there was a channel with castles and princesses, or even a channel about superheroes and the Avengers. The Little Club really offered something for everyone, and it's a great brand move to have different channels that cater towards many different interests. However, it can get to a point where there are too many characters for viewers to keep track of and support. As the Little Club introduced more characters, the less support and subscribers the new people gained. With all these characters slash YouTubers, the Little Club had management. I won't pretend to know how the Little Club ran their talent management, but there are a couple of things that stuck out to me that made them really successful as a brand. All of the YouTubers having the same email in their about section really told me that there was some sort of management and potentially someone taking a slice of all the brand deals. Second though, nearly all the videos from the Little Club have a full list of bit.ly links of each of the Little Club members' channels. Not only is it good to have multiple members that can cover a wide swath of different interests, but it's also good to have them interact and cross-promote. So this next section I'm calling the Little Lizard slash Little Club Empire. Now I know it's not just Little Lizard, I know that Ryan and Kelly are also involved in this whole thing. The Little Club Empire is expansive and it has to be for the Little Club to have such lavish lifestyles. In my research, which revolved around a lot of Instagram scrolling, I noticed the men from the Little Club going on trips, standing next to expensive cars, designer clothes, and potentially taking private jets. We know at the very least that between 2015 and 2019, Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle made 6.7 million euros. Little Kelly made nearly 500,000 euros in 2017 alone. So let's talk about the Little Club Empire. First and foremost, the Little Club Empire lives and thrives on YouTube. They started by making their money off of YouTube ads. And by making kid-friendly content, they definitely have a much higher CPM than most. Second, they make money off of brand deals. Most of the brand deals seem to be one-off videos where they play a game and the product is the game itself. Back in the day, creators did not have to disclose advertisements, so it can be tricky to narrow down what is a regular video and what is a brand deal or sponsored video. But for example, they did a sponsored video featuring Star Wars and Minecraft and a video playing Toka Blocks. Third, they make money off of merch that they sell. All the Little Club members who had merch sold their merch through one website, the Little Club Merch website. So many avenues of making money. We also know that Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle own Spectral Studios, which is a business that makes mods for Minecraft and Roblox. They made the Minecraft Dragonfire mod and the Roblox mod. These mods are on the Minecraft marketplace for a range of coins, the most expensive being about $8. I'm not sure how much of a cut creators get from being on the Minecraft marketplace, but it seems like they have a loyal player base. 
And as I previously mentioned, I uncovered the Seasons and Seasons 2 YouTube channels which post Fortnite skits. They have an epic partner code which they make money off of. The channels are also wildly popular, so you can imagine those codes are being used often. Now, the rest of what I'm about to say is entirely speculation and theories. I'm not stating this as fact, I'm just kind of thinking about other ways that Little Lizard, Tiny Turtle, and Little Kelly could be making money. As I mentioned before, all of the Little Club members have the same brand email in their YouTube About sections. This tells me that all the brand deals went through the Little Club management, meaning that someone is probably taking a cut from each brand deal. Think about it. Little Lizard, Tiny Turtle, and Little Kelly essentially could make influencers overnight. One of their friends wants to make some money, so they agree to make a channel with the Little Club branding, and Little Lizard, Tiny Turtle, and Little Kelly promote their channel, and overnight they gain over 100,000 subscribers. They make kid-friendly content so they get a high CPM and have a guaranteed fan base. Again, I am not stating this as a fact, but I'm just thinking about how they could benefit off of 20 plus different channels with such a high CPM. I'd say the downfall of the Little Club is a combination of different circumstances. In this section, I'd like to pinpoint where the downfall of the Little Club began, as well as a couple of reasons why I think the Little Club has fallen apart. In July 2017, Fortnite came out and every Minecraft channel across YouTube felt the ripples of the game's free-to-play release. While Minecraft was already on a decline at this time, a new hit game that all the kids were playing nearly sent Minecraft to its lowest point. The first Little Club member to quit was Little Leo, who quit in the same month as Fortnite's free-to-play release. Minecraft continued to decline and nearly hit its lowest point in the United States in May 2018. Viewers were simply not watching Minecraft as much as they used to. One month after Minecraft hit rock bottom in the United States, Scuba Steve quit YouTube less than one year after the creation of his channel. Minecraft hit its lowest point in Ireland in September 2018, and one month later, Sharky quit. With both Sharky and Scuba Steve gone, in combination with Minecraft's popularity hitting an all-time low, the dominoes began to topple. While little Leo quitting YouTube certainly made fans sad, he had only had his channel for five months and he was the last character to be introduced to the Little Club's cinematic universe. The departure of Sharky and Scuba Steve was a devastating blow to the Little Club. Only one month later, Max the Monkey, Baby Angel, Little Allie, and Cassie the Cat deleted their channels. It's possible that they stopped uploading well before this, but I can't see it since their channels were deleted. With more and more Little Club members leaving and Minecraft views being low, it would be easy to conclude that morale was down too. 2019 saw the departure of Little Carly, one of the most beloved Little Club members. In 2020, the pandemic hit, which caused normal life to be turned upside down even for content creators. While Minecraft's popularity spiked again, many of the creators were already gone or noticing their burnout after years of creating nearly daily Minecraft videos. In addition, these creators were getting older, getting married, and having kids. Baby Max, Donut the Dog, Little Donnie, and Baby Duck all quit uploading to their channels without a goodbye. We now know that Baby Max and Little Donnie went on to create the Fortnite Seasons account, but he still left his audience without closure. In addition, throughout 2017 to 2020, the audience is growing up and changing. The problem with gaming YouTubers, which I talked about in my Team Crafted video, is that their audience doesn't grow up with them. YouTubers continue to make content for a younger demographic. The problem with Minecraft specific channels is that they don't play other games, so they don't have the opportunity to grow with their audience when they move on to other games. Some of the creators like Little Lizard and Little Kelly created Fortnite channels that they uploaded to in addition to their Minecraft content, and that somewhat worked out for them. But not only is the audience growing up and changing, the Little Club members were growing up and growing into new stages of their lives. Many of the Little Club members started their channels in their late 20s to early 30s, meaning that they would soon be shifting into new life events like getting married or having kids. Whereas with Team Crafted, many of them started in their late teens to early 20s. In addition, years of creating can lead to burnout and serious decline of mental health. Many need to take breaks or quit altogether to recharge. Plus, with the pandemic in 2020, many of them may have needed to take care of their own families. But is the Little Club dead? I would say yes. The Little Club as we know it is dead. Little Lizard hasn't posted on his main page since December 2020. Tiny Turtle hasn't posted on his YouTube since May 2022. Many of the members have moved on with their lives, 
but it's still possible that Little Lizard and Tiny Turtle are working on new games for Spectral Studios. Little Kelly and Robo still post, so if you're still into Minecraft videos, be sure to check them out and show them your support. All we can do is reminisce on the golden days of the Little Club by re-watching their old content, and remember that even our favorite creators move on sometimes. Thank you so much for watching my video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below on your favorite memory from the Little Club. Bye!